Hi, I'm Sandy Peterson. Today we're going to talk about the independent great old ones. And we have 10 of these guys, 11 if you count Azathoth, but we already talked about him, so we're going to talk about these. Now, um, they all are, they're going to come in various packages, and what, and, and they're all awakened in basically the same way. To awaken one of these guys, you have to have your controlled gate in an area along with your great old one. You pay the cost of the one you're summoning. For example, say you wanted Abhoth. Abhoth costs four. That's a pretty typical cost for one of these great old ones. You pay your four power, and you place Abhoth in the area with your old one. That's how you get them. They all have identical requirements. Well, the cost can be different, except for two of them, two minor exceptions we'll get into later on. So, now, I say your great old one. It can be any great old one you control. For example, if um, you already had Abhoth in control and Seth Agar was busy somewhere else, you could use Abhoth to summon Shogner Fawn, because that's your great old one now, and you just summon another one with him, because you have him in the area with your gate. So um, that's how that works. Now, each independent great old one has his own cost, he has his own combat factor, and just like the regular great old ones, he has his own unique ability. For example, uh, Sathagawa has his lethargy ability that he comes with. Cthulhu has devour. Well, the lesser great old ones, these other great old ones, the independents have their own ability too. So Abhoth comes with the ability of filth, which we'll get to, which he can use whenever he wants. Now, um, another thing they have is that all the lesser great old ones have a spell book. Okay? Now, uh, they have a spell book requirement and a spell book. The spell book requirement is right on their loyalty card. All right? And if you fulfill this requirement, then you can take their spellbook, and it's one spellbook per great old one. So in the case of Abhoth, he has the spellbook of the Brood. So if you uh, meet the requirement for Abhoth's spellbook, you take the Brood and you put it on the Azathoth loyalty card. Unlike other spellbooks, you can't put it on any of your other slots. It has to go on the loyalty card. Okay, and then you get a new ability for um, for that spellbook. Now these great old ones can be killed like any great old one. If they are killed, then they are, you know, returned back off the map, and you lose the loyalty card, and the spell book falls off the loyalty card. Okay? So let's take an example. Abhoth loyalty card lets him put down counters that are called filth tokens. They're kind of like monsters. So we're I don't have any filth tokens at hand, but we're gonna use these upside down uh, uh, Elder Science for filth tokens. Say he's laid down some filth tokens. Okay. Well, if Abhoth is then killed, he goes off the map, you lose his loyalty guard, but the filth tokens are still there. They don't necessarily go away. Now, once he falls off, he's neutral again. So let's say Cthulhu is here with the control gate. He's Here's his great old one. Here's his control gate. He could summon Abhoth by paying the price. And now he's got the filth tokens because the filth tokens don't go away, right? So now he has Ab he has Abhoth. Now he has to re-earn the spell book if it, it okay. If, uh, he, if he doesn't get it automatically if the Abhoth already had it, he has to do whatever the requirements are to get that spell book again. Now say instead that um, that he was killed and then Sethagawa summoned him again, Sethagawa would also have to re-earn that spell book because it falls off the moment that he is killed, and you lose the uh, you lose the spell book and you got to earn it each time you summon him. Okay, uh, sometimes it's pretty quick to earn after you've done it the first time because the requirements are still in place that you got it for. So let's talk about these great old ones. So here we have Abhoth. Abhoth costs four power to summon. Uh, his, his combat factor is equal to the total filth tokens you have in place. So initially it's zero, right? Now his special ability is uh, pay one power and place a filth token anywhere on the board. So I can pay one power and put one over here with Cthulhu. Next turn, pay one power, put one over here in Arabia. Next turn, pay one power, put one here with Abhoth. Okay? And you keep doing that as much as you want. Now, the filth tokens act as a monster which rolls zero dice and can't move and can't declare combat. So you may wonder, well, what good are they? Well, they have kind of two good things about them. One is you can place them anywhere, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can't take any actions with them. You can't capture, capture cultists with them or anything. And they can take hits for you. So, for example, if someone tries to attack you here, where you have your monster, your filth token, one of the kills could go on the filth token, or a pain, right? So you can use it to absorb a hit, which is kind of nice. The other thing that they can do uh, comes along with their uh, his special ability. Now, you earn his spell book, Abhoth's, when you have 
four different kinds of monsters in play, or eight total monsters. And filth tokens count as one of the monsters for both purposes. When that happens, suddenly the filth tokens have a new ability. Gates in areas containing filth tokens, for example, this one, do not count during the doom phase. So during the doom phase, Cthulhu won't get a doom point for this gate because there's a filth token there, which means that if Cthulhu doesn't like that prospect, then sometime during the action phase, he's going to have to kill that filth token. Okay, now that's easy to do because they roll zero dice, and Cthulhu is really easy because he can devour it, but he still has to declare the combat and do it. So it's sort of a pain. And if he's spreading around in areas at all the different gates, it can be hard to get rid of the filth tokens. Also, you can pile a bunch up somewhere you want to protect to keep it from being hurt. So Atlas Nyatcha is uh, an effective uh, creature. And like I said, his combat's equal to the filth tokens. Usually you have two or three filth tokens on the map. You, know, you don't usually have that many because people are trying to kill them because they hate having their gates not count. But uh, there he is, Atlas Nyatcha, ladies and gentlemen. So let's move on from Atlas Nyatcha to our next one. And here we have the infamous Provocidian Shognerfawn. Woo, there he is. Get a good look at that guy. Sitting on his throne. So here's Shognerfawn, and he's been summoned by Cthulhu in this case. Now, Shognerfawn, um, he has a combat of three. It's a nice flat number, just three. That's not that good. I mean, your star spawns are as good as him, but his special ability is really good because his special ability, Miri Nigri, what it does is whenever there's combat in an area that has your controlled gate, you add three dice. It's like the gate is fighting for you, okay? It's a, it's a significant defensive addition. It's supposed to represent the, uh, the humanoid beings that Shogner Farm formed out of lizard and uh, uh, amphibian flesh called the Miri Nigri, and they're kind of around the gate to help protect it. So if Salthagwa comes in here to attack the gate, even if Thu is not there, well, this gate, let's give him a frog, uh, this gate is going to roll three dice all by itself, and the, so it's it's a way better defense than uh, before, because Shagnafon's on the map doing that. Now, Shagnafon usually isn't, despite this useful defensive ability Shagnafon gives you, generally that's not the reason people summon him. What they want out of him is his spellbook. And the way you get a spell book is you have to discard two of your Elder Signs. These are, these are Doom Points to help you win the game, so discarding those is a pretty big deal. Uh, I happen to pick up a two and a three here. Usually you'd want to discard two ones, right? Because you don't want to discard two ones. You have to lose Doom Points to get his spell book. But when you do, what happens is all the Elder Signs in the pool that haven't been drawn yet, you flip them face up so you can see the number. And then when anyone picks an Elder Sign, they earn an Elder Sign, you, Shogner Fawn's player, choose which one they get. It's also true for you. So, of course, you pick the threes for yourself, and you pick the ones for the other players. <laughs> Unless you're feeling really benign or you want to make a deal with them. But my experience is it's pretty much threes for you and ones for them, until the threes run out. Okay, we did have one game where there were so many Elder Signs, the ones ran out, and he actually had to give two to some of the players, and he, he was kind of bitter about that. But that's what Shagrafan does. He, he completely changes the way that the uh, Elder Signs work. That's huge. Yeah. Okay, so, and so, it's, so people, of course, want to kill it because of that ability. The idea behind the Great Old Ones, the independent Great Old Ones, by the way, just a little philosophy, is each of them are supposed to change the game in a major way for all the players. And uh, so... Apoth does that with the filth tokens cropping up on the map everywhere. Shagrafon does it by changing the basic function of the Elder Signs, uh, making them more valid for you, less valuable for everyone else. And now we'll get on to the next guy, which is Cthulhu, the Fire God. Woohoo! Um, I don't know if you can see him well. He looks like a big mass of cinders burning up. So here's Cthulhu, and we'll have Cthulhu summon him because the names kind of rhyme. And uh, in his case, he has a slightly different summoning method. When you summon him, his cost is six minus your great old one summoning cost. So Cthulhu costs six to summon after the first time he got those four. So instead of costing, um, he'd cost six minus four, so he'd cost two to summon. And then, but then you kill your great old one, so Cthulhu would die. Okay? If uh, if Sathago was summoned him, Sathago would cost eight, so it's six minus eight. You'd pay. Oh no, you'd earn two for summoning uh, for summoning with Cthulhu because it's. Six, wait. No. That's right. That's right, no, that's right. You'd lose two by summoning Cthulhu, and you'd earn two upon killing, uh, 
for summoning him, but you have to kill Tathagwa. So you, so you summon Cthulhu, you gain two power, and Tathagwa goes away. Which, okay, that's how you summon him. Now, um, and you replace your great old one with Cthulhu, so now you have Cthulhu instead of your great old one. But, there's reasons that's cool. For one thing, it's kind of neat to, to uh, turn in your great old one and get power for it instead of just getting, you know, screwed over, which is usually what happens. And now, his special ability, if Cthulhu is in a battle, okay, for each of your units with him that is hit by a pain result, you earn power. Okay, so you can go into combat and earn power by getting your own units pained. Pretty nice, huh? It gets better. If you pull off the, the if you kill an enemy great old one in combat, that's how you earn Cthulhu's spellbook. Okay, so here I, I've come with Cthulhu, I've got these guys. Oh, Cthulhu, oh by the way, Cthulhu's um, combat is equal to your current power. So that's another reason it's good to get power from getting them. So you have a bunch of power. Say you have power of 8 or 10. He's rolling t 8 or 10 dice here. He's got these two guys rolling 4 more dice. He has a pretty good chance of, uh, of killing Cthulhu here. Okay? Say he does. He kills Cthulhu. He gets his spellbook. This is the Firestorm spellbook. Okay? Now, if Cthulhu... If Cthulhu is in a combat after he has his spellbook, after he rolls all his kills, which are still high because he rolls so many dice, Okay, he can choose to spare one or more of the killed enemies. Okay, see, Cthulhu, Cthulhu comes here and he goes, haha, I'm going to pick on these poor Cthulhu guys. I got two kills, and he says, I'm going to spare them both. Neither of your guys are killed. Isn't that nice? Well, it's not that nice because uh, he bruises it to a pain, and that, of course they're pained out of the area, however they want to go, right? But for each person you spare, you gain an Elder Sign. So you can really rack up the Elder Signs by sparing people this way. So of course they want to kill Cthulhu, so you stop getting Elder Signs. So you have this powerhouse of a god, rolls lots of combat until late in the turn when you when you run low on power, then they want to come kill you. But he earns more power if you paint his guys. It's just, he, it's, uh, it's obnoxious. And uh, of course the Elder Sign thing is really good. Unless of course Shagner Fawn's in the game, in which case he is making you only get ones for your Elder Sign. But hey, that's life in the independent golden world. Mother Hydra, there she is. Okay, our, uh, an attractive great old one, I guess. And her ability is, oh, uh, sorry, uh, her combat is six minus the number of enemies used in the area. So she has more combat the fewer enemies there are, which is kind of uh, self-defeating. So if these two guys are here, her combat would be four. It would be six minus two for four. If she came here, her combat would be two, because there's four enemy units. So it gets lower the more there are. Now her special ability is she can choose any ocean area, okay, and all enemy cultists in that area have to be moved onto an adjacent land area. So for example, she could pick this ocean area, pay one power, the cultist's got to go up on the land. Say she had a cultist there too, she goes there, pays one power, they both have to go on an adjacent land area. So she can empty the water of cultists, which it, obviously is sometimes highly useful. Now, her, uh, she gets her spell book if um, either there's, either she has no great old ones in the ocean or the enemy has no great old ones in the ocean, okay? So one of those two is requirement. She gets her spell book. It is the zygote. Here is how it works. It's an action if she's in play. She pays one power and all of her cultists that are in her pool are placed on the map. So for example, say that she's used by Cthulhu, he's got three cultists somewhere on the map and three in his pool. He pays one power, he can place all three cultists. So it's a really cheap way of bringing back your cultists. Um, she's really good for a lot of factions, obviously, especially if you tend, you're likely to lose cultists. Um, uh, one good example is Black Goat, who loses cultists all the time. They're constantly being killed, so she is really handy for him to get those cultists back in a, in a flash for cheap. So that's what she does. And of course, the fact that she's striking across the map, making the oceans a pain, is really good. Yig, the, the rattlesnake god. Okay, you pay four power, put Yig in the area with your girl one. Combat's only two, sounds sucky, right? Well, it's not really, again, because of special abilities. Yig's special ability is that he makes your cultist poisonous, not venomous, poisonous. What this means is, if you're in combat against Yig's cultists, Yig doesn't even have to be there, he can be over here. Okay, 
and uh, one of his and one or more of his cultists are killed, then you, the attacker, get an extra kill because they ate one of the eggs cultists, and they're bad for you. So killing the eggs cultists now becomes a problem. You can still capture them and stuff, but uh, you can get killed. Now, as your action for uh, sorry, as your to get your spellbook for Yig, you actually have to remove a gate from the map. You don't have to kill the cultists though. So you remove a gate from the map. That's how you do it. That's how you get it. And then. The ability this gives you is, from then on, each Doom phase, every other faction decides if he wants to donate one power from his total to you. Now, of course, you're thinking, well, they don't want to, right? Well, of course they don't want to, but if they don't, you get a Doom point. So the choice is either I lose a power and Yig gets one, or Yig gets a Doom point. So no matter what they decide, you cackle with glee and gloat over the thing, and then they they sit there and they're bitter about Yig causing trouble and they want to go kill him. But that's, again, that's the purpose of life for Gridolins. So there's Yig. Atlas Natcha. The spinner of the web of time. There he is, Atlas Natcha. Okay, Atlas Natcha um, really changes the game a lot. Uh, she has a combat, or he, I guess, has a combat of four. And what his ability is, is on his turn, okay, if he's in an area that doesn't have a web token, which come with him, and again, I don't seem to have any web tokens at hand, so we'll use upside down Elder Signs. So here he is in this area, Atlas is there, he pays one power, he places a web token. It doesn't do anything, it's just there. Next turn, Atlas Jasha moves here, and then on the round after that, he pays one power, lays out another web token, and keeps going, okay? The webs don't do anything, they can't be destroyed, they just accumulate. Now, his spellbook requirement is that he has web tokens in six different areas. Okay? So, when he has web tokens in six areas, here's an, here, here we have him in. One, two, three, four, five, okay, six. I can count to six, there we go. Okay, then you get a spellbook. His spellbook is an action, costs zero. Immediately win the game. Even if you have less than six spellbooks. So, since these can't be destroyed and don't go away, when Last Last Chance is getting up to four or five web tokens, the other players are pretty keen on going after him and stopping him. And it's always a really interesting fight. Get Last Last Chance one more token, he'll win the game. And I've seen Last Last get up to all six and then be killed before he could take his win the game action. But then, of course, the next person to summon him can do that action because the web tokens are still there. So that's Last Last Chance. He fundamentally changed the way the game works. I would say that with Atlas Natcha in the game, Atlas Natcha wins about 30% of the time, maybe, because other guys are all focused on it. But of course, you know, in a four-player game, your chance of winning is 25%. So if you have him, that's good, right? So, uh, but it but the way you do it is totally different. You don't care about your gates. You just focus on Atlas Natcha, trying to use different techniques of getting there. You, uh, you might, for example, if you're Sathago, you might use your uh, Energy Nexus ability to keep him moving out of the way. Cthulhu could submerge off the map with him and come back in from somewhere far away and do it. It's uh, it's really fun. The, 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 some of the closest, most exciting games you've had have been with Atlas Natcha. Okay, Atlas Natcha, on to Bo Krug, the Water Lizard. Okay, Bo Krug um, is a great old one that has a, uh, a, a, um, a combat of one, so that's not so good. And Brokrug's ability is Ghost of Ib. I remember I, you remember I mentioned that when it, one of these guys is killed, then he goes off the map and everyone gets him. It's not true for him. If he's killed, he goes on to his loyalty card, and you don't lose control. Next Doom phase, you put him right back on the map, anywhere you want. So you never lose um, Yig, or sorry, Bokrug, once you get him. He's always yours. Now, this is, there's a problem with this, though. And you can keep him for your own guy just to have an extra girl one. But... Your spellbook requirement is take the Yig loyalty, the Bokrug loyalty card, and give it to another player. He now gets control of Yig. So someone else now has Yig. And you're thinking, why would I give him a god? Well, here's why. Because because also his spellbook kicks in. And his spellbook is the doom that came to Sarnath. At the end of each doom phase, choose an opponent. So for example, say I'm South Agua, and I say, okay, I choose <coughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu now can pick and remove one monster or cultist of his choice of yours from the map. So he could say, yeah, I think I'll kill this guy. Or say, well, I think I'll kill him off the gate. 
you know, whatever you want. You can kill. So each Doom phase, you lose a critical strategic unit because you have Yig. So I hope he makes up for it. What we find in our games is that typically a guy that summons Yig will keep him for a round or two and then give him to someone that's pestering him a lot. And then that person has to deal with Yig for the rest of the game because he has the bad part of Yig. But until you hand him over to someone else, Yig's only good for you. He's just like a weak cradle one. Bokru. Bokru. I keep saying Yig for some reason. It's Bokru. Look, they look completely different. I don't know why I keep making that mistake. I guess because they're both reptiles? I don't know. Okay, Father Dagon. Father Dagon. Um, his combat is two on land, six in the ocean. So obviously he's a pro ocean guy. Um, his special ability is sort of the opposite of Mother Hydra's, where she spends one power and sends cultists in the in the water to a land area. Um, Dagon spends one power and sends cultists on the land into an adjacent water area. Okay, so you know he can. It's called tsunami. It washes them off the land. Now, once you have eight areas in ocean in the ocean, okay, <coughs> then you can use the Innsmouth look. Uh, spell book. Now this spell book is kind of a double-edged sword. The way it works is, let's say Cthulhu has it here. It makes sense, right? Um, during each doom phase, you take one of your cultists and remove him from the game permanently. You can't resummon him. He's just gone. But you gain six power. So each turn, you lose another cultist permanently. That's another guy to control your gates, another unit to take hits. But you get six power each turn, which is huge. And, hopeful, and the idea is that with any luck, you'll be able to use that power to bring out, bring forth a great victory before, Bukru, before Dagon's uh, uh, cancerous ability depletes you too much. Um, so that's how he works. And of course, the extra six power is pretty huge, so it's generally considered worth it. Okay, Gatanathoa. Let's see, where is he? Here he is, Gatanathoa. One of our most striking real one. What? Oh yeah, don't look right straight at him. Um, so his ability, okay, his combat is equal to his enemy's total cultists on the map. So if they have one cultist, it's a one. If they have six cultists, it's a six. So that's how it goes. Now his ability is that um, any enemy acolyte cultists who share an area with Gatanathoa are immediately mummified. Okay. So for example, Gatanathoa moves here. This guy mummifies. You lay, that means you lay him on his side. And the result is that he can't move and next turn during gather power, he produces no power, but then you stand him up again. So he, he gets better or he's replaced by a kid or something, right? So they don't produce power. Now he would still control the gate if he was there. Okay, so they're not, you know, they have purposes. And they still engage in combat. If you take combat, they can take a hit, for example. Now, when you get his spell book, which occurs when you can, when either you control two or less gates, so it's a good thing if you're weak, or if you uh, pay three power, then his spell book is that your enemy can't assign kills or pains to mummified cultists unless every other unit in the area has been killed or pained. So they don't soak up hits for you, which is really good. And to show an example, let's, let's say that, that uh, Seth Agaway here has um, gotten Thoa. He moves here to the Atlantic Ocean, these guys immediately mummify. Then if I declare combat, like all the kills and pains have to go on him first before they can go on them. So you're really likely to kill Cthulhu in this case. So, uh, and of course, the, that's three power, he's, even if you don't kill anyone, that's three power he's not going to get. So sometimes they will take God and throw it and just walk across the map with them, mummifying everyone's cultists. Um, and that can be a pretty big hit. Uh, Yellow Sign, for example, tends to have a bunch of cultists clustering in Europe. You move God and in there and all five of those cultists are pow, mummified. That's five less power for you, Yellow Sign. And uh, that's uh, kind of dire. Of course, those cultists are the ones you usually pick to get killed when you have a chance to. So for example, uh, Black Goat has the ability of uh, Blood Sacrifice, killing one of her cultists for an Elder Sign each turn. I guarantee she's going to pick the Mummified guy for that. So that's how that works. So Gatanathoa uh, hinders the enemy cultists a lot and uh, makes cultists no longer good in defense. Okay, hey, is that all of them? No, it's not. It's all of them except for the weirdest. Gobogig, the twice invoked. Here he is, folks. Possibly the biggest grilled one. It's hard to say, really. I mean, 
Cthulhu's taller, but I think he's bulkier. So he's certainly a candidate for one of the biggest, if not the biggest. Anyway, here's Gobogi, the Twice Invoked. And he's also summoned weird. So to summon him, someone has to have six spell books. Doesn't have to be you. You have to have a controlled gate in an area of the old one. And then you pay his cost, which is zero, and place him. Okay, that's it. Someone has six spell books, I pay zero points, I place Global Gate. Here's what he does. Now, his special ability is called the Book of Law. While Global Gate is in play, whenever anyone awakens the Great Old One, they get a refund of six power afterwards. Okay, so say that he's at that you he's there, you've awakened him, then uh, South Agua says, oh, I want to summon South Agua. Well, that'll, only, that'll cost me eight power, then I get a refund of six, so it'll cost me two. And then Cthulhu here says, ooh, ooh, I want to summon Mother Dagon. Mother she Dagon. Mother Dagon, yeah, Mother Hydra. I want to, uh, it's like the, it's like the Yig, um, uh, the, the Yig Bokrug thing I was having earlier. Okay, so Father, M Mother Hydra. Well, she costs four, so I'll summon Mother Hydra. That costs four, then I get a refund of six, so I earn two power from summoning them. So what happens is everyone is starting to summon Great Old Ones like crazy because they're so cheap when Global Gig's in play. And the result is that the game usually doesn't last super long after Global Gig comes into play, because all the great olders appear with all their abilities are clashing and spiting each other, and, the, and every, all the world goes to hell in a handbasket. I've never seen it more than one round. Yeah, yeah my, my son just mentioned he's never seen it last more than one round after Global Gig comes on. Uh, I think I once saw Global Gig come on, and it lasted uh, through the end of that action phase, and, and then into the next action phase. But it was near the end of the phase when he was summoned, so that's probably why. But he's, he really brings about the end of the world fast. Now, his uh, special power is, he rolls zero dice, but if he's killed in combat, everyone is killed. And if he's pained in combat, everyone is pained, regardless of faction. Okay? Now, the Book of Chaos. Um, this is kind of a goofy one, but tough, you know. I got to design the game, so I picked this. The Book of Chaos is a spell book, and you get it if someone wins the game. So it's a spell book you only earn when the game ends, okay? It doesn't have to be you. Anyone wins it while you still have Gobogeg. You have Gobogeg, and uh, you're not Cthulhu, but Cthulhu wins. So you get the spell book, and here's what it says. Place this spell book, and then you earn the Cthulhu Wars victory token that comes in every box. Woohoo! And what this means is, next time your group plays Cthulhu Wars, you get to pick which factions, which expansions, which map, and which great olders are going to be used. So that's what you have. So he's really only good if you have a bunch of other great old ones, and then he messes up the game. It doesn't mess it up, but, but suddenly the whole game like goes like, to, a, to a critical mass and explodes at the end. Those are the independent great old ones. I hope you enjoyed the, our discussion, and we'll see you again later.